Hi, this is Terry Iverson from Iverson and Company in Champion Now. I'd like to talk to students today about the opportunities that are abundant in the manufacturing industry. About two years ago, I decided to write a book called Finding America's Greatest Champion, which talks to the abundance of opportunities in manufacturing careers. Over the next decade, there'll be three and a half million manufacturing jobs of which approximately 2 million will go unfilled because of this skills gap. I'd like to refer to it as an opportunity gap. If you took manufacturing in the US alone, the economy of just the manufacturing economy in the US, when compared to all the countries, other countries in the world, it would be the ninth largest economy in the world. And for every dollar that is spent in manufacturing, there's a dollar 89 added to the economy. One of the things that I talk about in my book in chapter nine is to find a passion and to find a way to make a career out of something that you love to do. Many people don't know anything about manufacturing. So the fact is whether or not they can make a career out of it or not, or whether they have an aptitude for it, they have no idea. This slide is, shows John Lennon and about how his mom used to talk to him about being happy in life. And we went to school at about five years of age and they asked him, John, what do you wanna be when you grow up? He says, I wanna be happy. And the instructor or the teacher said, well, John, you must not understand the assignment. And John respectfully said, well, you must not understand life. And so he had answered that his mom had told him that he wants to be happy. And uh, my point being is that you need to find something that you're passionate about. And in, in reality, it could be manufacturing if you just knew more. Right now, there's something that they're referring to in the media as the silver tsunami. And you, you can see by the slide that in the US, there's almost 15% of our population that's over 65. Japan on the other side of the coin is as high as 27% as of 2017. And what this means is those of us with gray hair, the silver portion of the, uh, of the nomenclature of the saying, is that many of us are, are nearing retirement. And so consequently, the skills and the tribal knowledge that we have, we have an opportunity to pass down to the next generation in, in a mentoring process. But we, there has to be some adequate number of people to step into those roles and that, that there lies the problem. When I was speaking to the, the Cutting Tool Institute at their annual meeting over a year ago uh, in October, I was speaking to them about the same subject matter. I was speaking to them about the book <clears throat> and I had heard before I got on stage of the millennial that was amongst the, the audience. And so that being said, there's far too female uh, people of female of the female gender in our industry, and there's far too many young people in our industry. And so the average age is 50 plus in manufacturing. And so this young man, Noah, ha was in the audience. And during my presentation, I called out the millennial in the room instead of the elephant in the room or what have you. And he was kind enough to stand up. And I took note and mentioned that you know, it, it was awesome that young people are coming into our industry, but there's just simply not enough of them. And that there's an opportunity what, to what I call reverse mentoring, that not only can they be mentored by older individuals like myself, but they can also mentor from the technology standpoint and social media standpoint of things that they know far more about than even people my age. So <clears throat> Dennis from C, uh, Cutting Tool Engineering Magazine videotaped this and, and we have this residing on the Champion Now site and you can you can see it in full uh, the interview but it shows the dialogue and the the conversations that need to happen between my generation and the generations uh, behind us or or that follow us I should say. As far as young people I tried in the book to make mention of those young people that I've mentored that have done very well for themselves and got gone into a manufacturing role without even knowing that 
that they would do that in their in their career. The first person I'll make mention of is Dana Ward. Dana, uh, I coached a, a travel soccer team that my daughter played for, and Dana was a soccer player on that team. And as she she was very well rounded, and and that's something that I I could identify with Dana because I made a conscious decision to be the same way. I wanted academics, athletics, and social components of my my involvement to have equal uh, importance. <clears throat> and Dana did the same thing uh, when I knew her growing up, when she was growing up. Well, when she got out, she went into the social media platform and, and was heavily involved in that. And then somehow, some way, she stumbled upon an idea that she decided to pursue, which was something called that she called pre-heels, which was a spray to to put on the back of your heel, and I think the initial case was for women in high heels to avoid blisters, but of course it it can apply to any gender. And last I checked, two or three years ago, she, she had done well over three million dollars in sales, and I'm sure she's way beyond that now. And now she's gone into a, a expanded product line called the Barefoot Scientist. So <clears throat> the other individual I'll speak about is Craig Rabin. Craig was a young entrepreneur at about 16, 17 years old. He used to write HTML code for my Iverson and Company website when he was in high school. And Craig is quoted in the book that he would rather have 10 ideas of which nine ideas failed and, and didn't become much if, if in fact one would, would actually make it big. And in his case, he designed and built and created something called the air hook. And there was an opportunity where he was on the Steve Harvey show uh, or a Steve Harvey show called the Thunderdome Fund, F-U-N-D, where people come on with ideas with the ability to finance and, and gain capital for their either new product or new company. And in this particular case, Craig was one of the first contestants, there, there was two, and there was a $20,000 prize. And Craig was fortunate enough to in fact, win, <clears throat> be the first winner on this show, and win $20,000 to launch his Airhook product. So case in point, too many young people don't know anything about manufacturing, and certainly Dana and Craig both had no idea about manufacturing, and they decided to go down the entrepreneur route. In reality, if we just informed our young people early enough or certainly much earlier, and instead of them stumbling into an opportunity, they pursued an, an opportunity early in their, their lives, uh, I think they, they would be much more successful and, and, and the path would be much clearer. A couple things that I'd like to speak about on the Champion Now website is uh, this particular slide shows that back in 2013, our local Congressman Brad Schneider had asked me to speak to the Small Business Committee of the House of Representatives. And here, this picture shows me and two other employers talking about the difficulty for manufacturers, small manufacturers, to find skilled employees, skilled workers. During the pandemic, I was able to have well over two dozen uh, podcast interviews. And we those all those interviews reside on the Champion Now site under the podcast link. But going forward, forward, one of the things that we're trying to incorporate, incorporate is a Roku channel so that industry members can join Champion Now and post their videos and their careers and what they do in, in their products on the Roku channel. On the other side of the coin, we have a partner that we're working with very closely to launch an educational student resume video portal. So students can come into the Champion Now membership and have a link where they can show a video interview, they can show some of their coursework, some of the things that they, some of the either design work or projects they've worked on, their written re resume and their history, but then also a video element to that. And so our hope is, is that we have the ability for students to come into the Champion Now site, industry to come into the Champion Now site, site and, and have interaction amongst both of them, uh, which is where the magic, presumably where the magic happens, so to speak. So 
after the pandemic, one of the things that I realized, I had done a, a CNC rocks, uh, it's a trademark term that I use to, uh, to describe that CNC technology and, and computerized manufacturing is, is cool. And it's something that more young people should know about. So in this picture, I show a group of young people at a school down in Jacksonville, Florida at Frank Peterson Academy. And we had a, I shipped a, a CNC machine down there, which was pretty expensive thing to do. And a computerized uh, digital inspection system. And so I shipped it down there, took a week off work and myself and, and Russ had the time to designate to teach CNC programming on a lathe and also how to inspect parts made off of a lathe. And so it, it, it was very successful. We were able to introduce many young people to manufacturing careers and manufacturing technology. But as the more I thought about it during the pandemic, I thought, you know, it's gonna be really hard. I think my hard costs were probably ten, twelve thousand $12,000, not including any labor, just in getting machines set up and, and shipped down, so to speak, to, to their location. And I thought, you know, that's a really difficult and expensive way to, to get the word out on manufacturing careers and, and an introduction to manufacturing terms and, and concepts and processes. So during the pandemic, I decided to start a CNC Rocks virtual manufacturing camp. And so that being said, we're up to about 22 videos and four hours of content covering all sorts of different topics and trying to show the relevance of manufacturing in everyday life, which in our country, we have a underappreciation of the manufacturing of products and, and what we do in this country in terms of making products. So this is another, uh, you'll find a 19 minute uh, video summary right on the championnow.org website. So you can actually look and view a sample of this. Schools are able to subscribe for $500 for the year. So your, your local school or your school district can sub subscribe. We have a, a price for that as well. Uh, or industry uh, can subscribe for a year for like $1,000 for, for the year. So that being said, what I would suggest is go on the Champion Now site, look at the video summary that we've got on the CNC Rocks, listen to some of the podcasts, the 25, 28 different podcast interviews, go on and listen to an audio sample of the book, and see if manufacturing might be for you. Uh, the last thing that I try to, to describe in the book is the cost differential of a young person going down a four or five year degreed path uh, where they may spend anywhere from 50 to $250,000 for an education. And instead consider going directly into manufacturing, maybe possibly go in manufacturing day every October in tour manufacturing, a local manufacturing company. Uh, ask your school about potentially looking at internships so that during the summer or during the school year, you can do an internship at a manufacturing company. So that if nothing else, you can learn more about what the manufacturing sector is and whether or not it's something that you should even look at at all. Uh, of course, the earlier you can do this in your career, in your educational career, uh, freshman, sophomore year, the more you can enter into a Project Lead the Way class or a CTE program, which is careers in technical education. And you can decide to make a decision that that's something that you wanna pursue or not. If you do wanna pursue it, great. If it's not for you, that's perfectly fine as well. But simply there's just too few people uh, that are aware of what manufacturing careers are and, and how much they, they uh, pay. Uh, this is on page 147 of my book. And I'll talk a little bit about this with Mike Rowe. You know, he's saying we're lending money that we don't have to young people who can't pay it back. And we train them for jobs that no longer exist. That's nuts. And so there, while there are exceptions to, the, to this comment and to all comments, I think the point is very valid. 
is that many people will you'll find will be will go out have a degree and you know find out that there's too many people applying for the same position and there's simply not enough jobs for the people that are following the educational path in this country and then there's others there's jobs in manufacturing that nobody sim simply knows about and there is a path of going into a two-year education or maybe even going right into work into the workforce and allowing your manufacturer or your employer actually pay for your education either after hours or or maybe you know earn while you learn so to speak as, as the term may go but the skills gap we have in this country is is based on what we value and in order to close that mike says that we need to change the the way this country the way our culture views work and and hard work and working with your hands in europe there's a lot of admiration for people that make things and people that have a skill set and they the apprenticeship model in Europe is still alive and well. And in our country, in the US, uh, we had an apprenticeship program and it was alive and well, but it, it kind of waned in, in going through the early to mid eighties. And now what has occurred is that there's a resurgence of the apprenticeship program and, and the apprenticeship model. So in, in the book on page 147, I talk about 12 years out from high school, that a four or five year college degree individual, when you take into account the tens of thousands or in some cases, hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt, that at the end of 12 years, that person could be as much as with conservative estimates, as much as 120,000 cash negative. On the other side of the coin, a two year degree individual with a skill set that has a very modest uh, entry point as far as cost of, of education, 12 years out is actually $90,000 cash positive. So that being said, there's a lot to be said for the plumbers and the electricians and the machinists and the setup men and women and, and the people that go into these skilled positions and that their debt is significantly less. The student debt crisis in this country is, is, is out of control. So what I would ask you to consider is go to our website, championnow.org, and uh, send me an email at either one of my email addresses, terry at championnow.org, or t. Iverson at iversonandcompany.com. And do some research. I tell young people all the time that there really is no excuse for not knowing because there's, there's the internet, there's YouTube, and there's all sorts of ways that you can investigate opportunities in manufacturing if you just do your homework. So hopefully some of these things resonate with you and hopefully some of the videos, whether it's CNC rocks, the video sample, or things that you might search on YouTube. But I hope there's some things here that could enlighten you and hopefully potentially change your life. Thank you.